Welcome back guys, Sly Bacon here, and today's video we're going to be talking about the Empire, or the Empire of Man. So as the name would suggest, the Empire of Man is an Empire of Men. Now honestly, this video could be an hour long, but I'm going to try and make it within the 10 minute time limit. So we're going to brush through this stuff pretty quickly. So the Empire is made up of 10 different provinces. When it was originally formed, it was made up of 12. So I'm going to go through their names real quick. Avonland, Hockland, Middenland, Nordland, Ostland, Ostermark, Reinkland, Stirland, Talibikland, and Westland. Now each of these regions is ruled by a count, and all the regions combined, which is known as the Empire, is ruled by an emperor. Think of ancient Rome, and you're probably not that far off. Now the Empire was originally formed after the Battle of the Blackfire Pass, which we've actually seen footage of it with some of the first footage that came out. And at the time, the leader of the army was Sigma. Now you've no doubt heard the name Sigma within the game, so Sigma was a man. He was the first man that was able to unite most of the tribes of men. Now Sigma's story is actually really interesting, it could actually be its own um, video itself, so just a real quick overview. Obviously he was a man. He saved the Dwarf King of Kazakh Karan um, from the Orcs, he actually ambushed a bunch of Orcs leaving Kazakh Karan after they invaded it, and he was able to rescue the King. After this battle, the Dwarf King gave Sigma his hammer, which is the famous hammer you see in all the illustrations of Sigma. After the Battle of Blackfire Pass, Sigma was voted in as the Emperor of the Empire. That's a tongue twister. Soon after this, Sigma disappeared, and it was at that point that he was elevated to the status of the other gods. So you have to understand that Sigma is the major religion within the Empire, however it is not the only one. There is a lot more other religions within the Empire, and they are known as the Old Faith. So in this instance, think Game of Thrones with their two major religions, except there's more than two. So real quick wrap up, the Empire is a human faction made up of 10 different provinces. Main religion is Sigma, who was a man at one point in time. Think ancient Rome with a bit of magic thrown in and you are not far off. So each region within the Empire is ruled by a count and the overall Empire is ruled by the Emperor. The Emperor is elected by a majority vote from the Counts, the leader of the Sigma Church, the two clerics of the Sigma Church, the High Priest of Ulrich, and the Elder of Moot. As mentioned earlier, Sigma is the biggest religion within the Empire, but some regions have stronger links to the older gods known as the Old Faith, such as the Middleheimers who revere Ulrich, and Talibikland who revere the god Tal. The Empire has multiple alliances. The Dwarfs are the Empire's closest ally, and have been from its beginnings. This alliance provides not only military support, but also technological and commercial trading. A large contingent of dwarfs has settled in the Empire, and owe their allegiance to the Empire rather than their ancestral homelands. Britonia is often a rival of the Empire in both trade and war, but in the most dire situations, Britonia has supported the Empire with a few troops, notably in the recent Storms of Chaos. The wintry kingdom of Kislev to the north and east has been on good terms with the Empire since the Great War Against Chaos. Ties with the High Elves are strong and growing. The Wood Elves have also been one of the Empire's allies in times of turmoil. Fighting against the Beast Men inside the Forest of Shadows, the Empire also has strong trade relationships with many other regions throughout the world. Alright guys, now we have a chance to look at Sigma a bit more closely. I'm just going to highlight some of the achievements throughout his life. At the age of 15, Sigma is believed to have driven off a goblin invasion of his village. In the same year, Sigma led an expedition against an orc war party that was holding Kurgan Ironbeard, a king of the dwarf people prisoner. In gratitude, Kurgan presented the boy warrior with a magical rune enchanted weapon called the Scale Splitter. Sigma then went on a campaign to unite the tribes of men. The most famous incident was the subjugation of the belligerent Theogens, the largest and most powerful of the tribes, who lived near the Middle Mountains in the North Central Empire. Their chieftain, Uta, was defeated by Sigma in single combat and this is commonly held to have been the point at which Sigma gained control of the tribes of the Empire. From that point on, Sigma led a campaign of liberation throughout all the tribal lands, primarily against the Beastmen and the Orcs and Goblins, which culminated in the First Battle of Blackfire Pass. Following this great victory, Sigma returned in triumph to his native Reichland and was crowned Emperor Sigma Haldenhammer, which means Hammer of the Heroes, at Reichendorf, the site of the current imperial capital of Eldorf. This date remains the Empire's greatest holy day as it marks Sigma's coronation. While an Empire rules to this day, Sigma also gave power to the leaders of the tribes who had been united into his Empire. These powerful men were set up as electoral counts, a hereditary position second only to the Empire in power, and from whose ranks the Emperor is almost always chosen. 
As it is well known that the dwarfs will always remember a favour, or a foe, the High King of the Dwarfs, Kurgan, ordered a commissioning of the Rune Fangs by the legendary dwarf smith Alec the Mad to be gifted to the elected counts. Painstakingly crafted, these blades were not complete until after Sigma's ascension to godhood, but when finished they were presented to the Empire, who then divided them amongst the twelve ruling counts as symbols of their power, as well as a token of eternal friendship with the dwarfs. Emperor Karl Franz Threatened from without by races bent on evil doing and from within by political fighting and petty ambitions, the Empire has held together throughout the ages in a fragile alliance, often teetering on the brink of disaster, but now there is a measure of stability and hope for mankind. For one man is fated to negotiate the treacherous webs of imperial politics and overcome the countless entrenched rivals to, to bind the warring provinces under his banner. A man of astonishing military powers, as gifted a warrior and commander as he is a statesman, that man is Kalfranz, Prince of Aldorf, Elector Count of Reichland and Emperor, soaring aloft on Deathclaw, most ferocious of the Imperial Griffins, and wielding Skullsplitter, the fabled hammer once held by Sigma himself. Karl Franz inspires the men he leads to feats of courage and heroism. A military genius and the greatest statesman the old world has ever seen, he is the Empire's greatest hope for survival in a brutal, war-torn world. Since an early age, Balthazar Gelt has long been fascinated with the College of Magic, known as the Law of Metal. From his first arrival in Aldorf, Gelt proved himself to be a prodigy with a fierce appetite for knowledge. Balthazar quickly rose to prominence in the city, even earning the admiration of the Imperial Engineers School for his research into new formulations for black powder. It was here that an accident, a magical explosion, nearly ended him altogether. Though no one knows how badly he was hurt, or even the manner of the injuries he sustained, the sorcerer survived. He did not die. He was certainly transformed. Some say his skin turned to pure gold, others say he was merely disfigured. Whatever the truth, he is now only seeing his resplendent gold face mask, shimmering head to toe in metallic robes. Rather than dissuade him, the accident only added to his hunger for the master of law of metal. His newfound determination helped him attain the rank of Supreme Patriarch of the Colleges of Magic. In battle, he needs to do nothing more than wave his hands, and the ranks of enemy soldiers are frozen forever, nothing more than lifeless golden statues. With powers such as these, Balthasar has won the Empire a great many victories. That being said, he is not wholly trusted. Alright guys, so now we're going to have a look at the army and my favourite units. So the Empire as a whole is the most traditional race um, within Total War Warhammer. If you're used to playing any Total War games, you'll be very familiar with the army style and the combat style. So they're very strong cavalry, rather weak infantry, very powerful machinery, so artillery, um, steam tanks, etc. So unlike the other videos, we're not really going to be looking at the standard army units because they're pretty self-explanatory and everybody should be pretty familiar with those, but I'll just go through what they are. So we've got the halberdiers, the spearmen, the swordsmen, the spears, um, the great swords as the infantry units and as your missile infantry, you have crossbowmen and handgunners. So you guys all should be pretty familiar with those in general. So what we are going to be looking at is more the special units and the hero units within the Empire Army. So first up we have probably the most recognisable and famous unit is the Warrior Priests. So they are exactly as they sound, they are Warrior Priests. So they not only lead the men and inspire the troops on the field of battle, they also administer their spiritual needs against the enemy foes. So not only are they fearsome warriors in their own rights, they also offer morale boosts to your other troops. Next up we have Witch Hunters. Witch Hunters are grim individuals who have dedicated themselves to the eradication of chaos from the lands of the Empire of Man. Very powerful ranged fighters, their iconic symbols are the pistol and rapier. Next up we have Bright Wizards. Bright Wizards are ranged spellcasters that specialise in fire magic. In other games they have a mechanic known as combustion which basically over time every time you cast a spell their combustion level rises and once it gets to a certain point it actually blows up and hurts the spell cast. I'm, but I'm unsure if this mechanic is in Total War Warhammer. Next up we have the Demogriff Knights which are amongst the most powerful and heavily armoured shock cavalry ever fielded within the Empire. Although the Knights themselves are expert cavalrymen, the mounts that the Knights rides are what truly distinguishes them in the heat of battle. These massive war beasts are ferocious and powerfully built, standing larger than the Imperial War Horse, and are far more bloodthirsty in their murderous assault. Next up we have Steam Tanks. Steam Tanks are monstrous, smoke-belching war machines that rumble towards the enemy, and fire deadly cannonballs from the steam-powered guns that crush all those who stand against the Empire. 
And the last unit we're going to look at is the Empire Great Cannons. So the Great Cannons are amongst the largest and most mobile cannons ever built. Fearsome and devastating machines, the Great Cannons have proven their worth time and time again. Alright guys, so that brings us to the end of our introduction to the Empire. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, thanks for watching and we will catch you next time.